Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is uh, Dr. Muhammad Hari Sadiq. I'm one of the surgical registrars currently in a training program working in UK. In this video, we will be discussing about S33 General Surgical Training Program application process and the portfolio section. I will take you to, through the entire process of this self-assessment, uh, break down the scoring of the portfolio section and also will guide you how to present your portfolio and also on the tips and tricks to maximize your portfolio section. So let's get started with the video. First thing first, if you want to apply for ST3 program, these are the some of the essential things which you will be needing in order to be eligible to apply for ST3 general surgical training program. Number one is your medical degree. MBBS um, is one of the most criteria. The second is GMC registration. Uh, which means you need to have a MRCS Part A and Part B exam, which should be passed before you can apply for the training program. The other is uh, a proof of core surgical training program completion in terms of uh, satisfactory ERCP or uh, your training core training program uh, training completion evidence. Some people who, has, who have not worked in UK and uh, have not done the pathway for core training program are applying through alternative pathway. People who have not done core surgical training program but are applying through the alternative route at ST3 application, they need to get their uh, certificate of readiness to enter to higher specialty training uh, certificate signed off from their supervisor. I will attach a link in the description so that you can have a look at it it has it has its own several components long listing which you need to go through and make sure you fulfill those criteria so that your supervisor is happy to fill that application and sign it off you need to have all of this before you apply for the training program application your self-assessment score is another important component of the application so you will be sent a couple of things which you need to provide an evidence that you have done those things. It will be verified by a panel. Then you will be shortlisted to the next stage of application, which is interview. So this is uh, very important and essential. Let's get started and break it down. What are the things required and how you can present the evidence so that you can prepare it well in advance. So in summary, the more months you have spent in, in general surgery, post foundation here the more chances and the more scores you get the sweet spot is around 25 to 36 months of general surgical experience where you get the six marks uh, which is the maximum marks in this section um, and it's the rest you can see on the side of the window it depends how much you score so sweet spot is 25 to 36 months this section points out that if you have done uh, at least four months in any other specialty other than general surgery, it can, it can include ITU, ENT, urology, vascular, knee, all these specialties are counted towards if you have done rotations. If you have done two or more of these different rotations, at which are at least four months each, then yes, you have got the maximum marks, which is four. The table tells you how much the hierarchy of these points from least to high. Operative experience. Surgical logbook matters. If you have done uh, if you have done 36 to 80 appendectomies, this is the where you get the maximum marks. Remember, these is to be STS, STU, or performed or trained. So STS means if supervisor is scrubbed with you and uh, you are doing the operation. STU means it's uh, trainer is present in theaters, but he is unscrubbed. Performed is we have performed in the absence or being remotely monitored by your supervisor. T means you have trained or you are training another person, uh, which is the next level of the training. But all of them equally carried in your portfolio. I have made another video uh, for uh, for the e-log book. Uh, dot org, which is a surgical portfolio for logging your cases. So make sure you go through that video and see how you can present these uh, type of data and get your signed off from your supervisor beforehand and uh, present it in the portfolio section in the self-assessment. Publications. Uh, have you got PubMed index papers which are published and uh, have a PubMed ID and the journal factor attached with the, uh, with the evidence? 
it can be international uh, national or regional if you have got two or more of these then you get the maximum marks and that maximum marks to a claim in these is 10 points so evidence needed is basically your uh, presentation details paper details with a permanent id this section carries 21 marks which is the biggest of all eight marks can be carried per closed loop audit and five marks can be carried for qip so if you have two closed loop audits and uh, one qip then you can score the maximum marks in it you will be awarded on the terms and condition that your involvement your reference your study design and importance of the clinical question and impact of the work you will be marked on these sections and it will be divided and given that maximum of 21 marks so make sure you present your best of closed loop audits and another important factor is that uh, you need to be involved in both the sections of the closed loop audit if for instance you have done one audit either you are doing the second part of the or re-audit then you will it will be not counted towards as a closed loop audit and you will lose marks so make sure you are involved in the entire section of the closed loop audit in the first audit and the re-audit same goes for the qip you have done the audit and you have brought some change then uh, this is a qip so in in order to gain maximum marks you can have two closed loop audits and one qip to get the maximum marks in this section this section is about additional degrees pg certs carries the least marks which is one in the same way diploma or masters carries two marks master with the thesis submitted chm in the masters carries three marks in the same way md is four maximum marks you get is for phd well done if you have done phd but don't be disheartened if you have if you do not have a phd because many people applying at this day do not have that because phd getting on itself carry, additionally requires three to four years of experience in the search and doing it even more than that so these people mostly will be overqualified can will be losing marks in other sections of the portfolio so don't be worried if you have degrees that's fine now the least i you can do is do a pg cert which is for six months or few months so i had if you're planning for next year so you can start planning now in advance you can get a mark some marks in it because remember every marks counts and you'll be asked uh, about the degree about the university and uh, the credentials of the pg cert it has to be by an accredited university which uh, uk will accept so these are some of the points should be noted when you're doing that. There are many universities um, which are doing uh, online PG certs. You can apply and uh, get it by your training application. So final tips and tricks. Make sure all of the portfolio section is uh, signed off on a template section. This template section is uh, provided with the training application. I will attach the links of those down below um so that you can hi have an idea that how the template looks like so first of all you need the evidence of presentation or uh, your evidence of your portfolio or part whichever video you are presenting then you need to get this template put all that information in that and uh, submit it and you, it needs to be signed off by uh, your education supervisor and your gmc number or equivalent if you are outside of uk and uh, you're getting it signed so this is very important because uh, any section which is missing this template you will not get any marks for that and in the end you will lose many marks just with a small mistake so just remember you need to fill that template as well also uh, you can appeal if you think that uh, these marks are not justified which you have been given but going through appeal and chances are very slim because uh, your portfolio is double scrutinized by a team of uh, highly qualified consultants and the trainee representative and a layman person so that's why these go through many processes and uh, to give you the shortlisting score and of which will be the score will be finalized so um, my tip will be to start with a clear plan and make sure you have all the evidence from the start which you can present easily so do you so want to ace your application st3 application i will be making further videos on it about the interview section about different sections if you need any help tell me i will try to make a video on these 
so that this can pathway can be smooth as possible for you so if you have any questions if you want me to be, make any other video regarding around these topics so please uh, let me know this tune for my other video for the interview section and how to prepare how it works what are the type of questions you will be asked stay tuned like subscribe and share with your colleagues as well this encourages me to make more videos regarding around these topics my main aim is to help you guys for your training applications um so see you in the next video bye for now take care bye